Hey what's up everybody, ever wanted to try out Linux or Pop OS? You know especially if you are into Blender, Unreal, Substance Paint or Substance Designer. These things work really well in Linux. Yes, they work faster than the Windows alternatives and also these things are kind of difficult to set it up but once you set it up it's good to go you can always keep working on them and the environment of linux is much 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 inviting that's because there is no bloatware and there is no forced updates and there is no distractions inside linux everything is really simple and minimal and that's it and there is no corporate vibe or business vibe like they're not trying to back money from you as it's now in the subscription models of adobe programs and such no pun intended it's just that i prefer to work in a really distraction free environment yes and one more thing to know this is going to be a really long video and that's because we are not just exploring how to install these particular applications no we'll be exploring a lot more you know this is the only video you will need to work with linux to start working with linux linux is not just about installing the applications there are a lot of things a lot of capabilities and a lot of possibilities for instance setting up keyboard shortcuts and how about setting up your browser how about setting up other common things like other common apps like color picker how about a to-do list how about other cool apps we'll be exploring a lot more things than these four applications that i mentioned we'll be exploring a lot more apps and i cannot keep track of all of them there is a lot there is a lot and and a lot of tips in between like i keep repeating some things which are often used in linux but nobody really talks about it anywhere that's because it's very obvious but whenever a newbie starts using linux he often takes a lot of time to figure it out by himself or just by googling around or just searching around so I have tried to compile a lot of things so this is going to be really long but bear with me it's going to be worth it so let's head into the video let's go hey there folks if you have been meaning to try out pop OS for yourself and you were not able to find a way to install it properly there is this video from KSK Royal and you could refer to that and also one thing to note if you are going to use Blender, Unreal or especially Substance Painter or Substance Apps inside Pop OS, make sure you have a swap space of 18,000 MB this is something you have to allocate while you are installing your OS so this should be really careful you should be really careful about this you should allocate a space of 18,000 MB for Linux swap okay everything else follow it until you are inst until you have installed your OS and when you're ready to install your grub customizer or grub menu head back to here okay cool let's see hey what's up guys i just installed my pop os a fresh new install all right now i haven't even installed the grub menu or the dual boot menu let's see how we can install it but first off you have to upgrade and update the repositories sudo apt update
now sudo apt upgrade cool now let's try and install our grub menus so this is the command for that sudo apt install grub efi grub to common grub customizer let's see what we get as you can see it says unable to locate grub customizer and that's not a big deal okay we can fix it quite easily we just have to add the repository of grub customizer for that what i did is i just googled enable to locate package grub customizer just copy pasted this command onto google and as you can see these issues which are already solved by someone else so it's always there we just have to access it we just have to look for it that's all I'm adding that repository now I'm um, entering the second command just updating again now let's try and install it grub okay sudo apd install grub efi grub to common grub customizer just click on y for yes okay from here on out you can always continue watching or continue following the steps from that installation video Hey what's up, so I'm back here with my pop OS, it's freshly installed and I have installed my grub menu. Now let's see what we have to do. Just head over to this top menu and click on this not charging and make sure you switch to hybrid graphics mode. Trust me on this because this one, it makes a lot of functions effortless. For instance, if you're connecting your graphics tablet, it should be in hybrid graphics mode. It should also work in NVIDIA graphics mode, but I feel like this may be a bit too much or too much overload for our graphics card. I don't know personally, I don't know how my graphics card feels, but I feel hybrid works flawlessly all the time. So that's that. And you gotta reboot it once you switch to hybrid. Now let's see. First of all, we have all of our text and font very tiny, right? Let's fix it. Go over to the settings and let's see what can we change. Yeah, I'm going to the accessibility and clicking on or turning on the large text. This should do it. Yeah, that's enough. That's right around where I want. And what else? Let's customize the dock. I don't like this dock on the bottom. I will be making it to the right or switching it to the right. Let's see. Not this. Ah, desktop. Dock. I set my dock visibility to always visible and I use one extension to hide and unhide it whenever I need. to the right side of the screen yeah this is what I want and to the end 
that's what I like and I don't like this too big okay I'm gonna reduce the size to small everything else is default and anything else Yeah, on the desktop options, I will enable this hot corner. Although I don't use workspaces that much, I like this. You know, whenever I want to switch to something else, I like to use the workspaces. And the top bar, I set my date and time notification position to left. This is how I like it. So that's that. And also on the window controls, we need our maximize button. Right now we only have our minimize and exit button. If we turn on this one, okay, we now got our maximize button. And also this one, right? This is essential. I'm not changing my wallpaper right now. Also my theme is the dark theme, as you might have noticed already so that's that I have done what I want to do with my settings now let's discover some extensions that I use But before we do that, I want to show you how I keep my files and folders organized. On the home directory, I make a new folder named apps with all small letters. Okay. There. Now, whatever application files, I just move it to my apps folder directory and extract it there I delete whatever files I don't need all the redundant files I just delete it and simply start my files which I just need everything else just de delete it from this folder. I try to make it or keep it as clean as possible. This apps directory. This way we don't need to clutter our apps folder. If you want to keep a backup of your folders or the files like the file we just deleted. You could keep a backup somewhere else. But on the apps folder that's best not to do it. Also I... I like to keep it over here yeah new bookmark yes just drag it to the new bookmark you know if you just drag it over to the left it will show a new bookmark and you can drag it over to there that's all now we can access it very easily Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is that I I don't like this menu. All these menus, I don't use it. So I always remove everything I don't need. I only keep this one thing. which is the app show applications everything else I just remove you could remove this too but I have noticed that if you remove any if you remove this special thing or especially if you remove this show applications it will cause some bugs because if you don't have anything over here and then what's the point of this right so that's that There is something we forgot to do in the settings. We have our desktop and dock. Over here, you have the icon click action. 
I like to make it launch, minimize or preview windows. This is really handy. You can preview your window and also minimize and maximize it as we need. Now, in order to properly see it's working in action, you'll need to reboot it. That's for sure. Hey, I forgot something. Actually, it was some misguidance from me. A little tiny bit of misguidance. <laughs> I hope you forgive me. Okay. It's from... If you want to have your home screen like this with the top bar and the dock hidden away when it's toggled. For instance, let's say we toggle our dock to stay and our top bar to stay using you know what and let's say we want to toggle that off okay normally this does not happen if you have followed my instruction so what you have to do is you have to go to settings and make go to the desktop and dock and dock visibility turn this to or set it to always hide this is not some um something which always this is something i really missed out because i really forgot until i came to this point so that's that if you set this to always hide you can control it better using this thing and don't forget always keep your top bar active when you're going to shut down or power off so that's that and thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Alright, once I'm done with the small stuff, let's see, let's change the wallpaper. I like my wallpaper from Gerudalinex, I don't know, I just like this wallpaper so much. That's all. Huh. That's nice, real nice. Now we have to install some extensions. These are the extensions I used in my, or these are the extensions I'm gonna install. As you can see here, all these are just minimal and just the thing we need, okay? Let's see how we can install. You can open up your Firefox browser and type in gnome extensions i think you have to enable your add-ons yes you have to install your browser extension just add the gnome browser extension first now let's type in our clipboard indicator yeah that's the first one or should I go for gnome clipboard I think clipboard indicator works best for me so I'm gonna install it just turn it on once you have installed your gnome shell integration or the browser extension you can install it directly from the browser yes it's installed on the top top right corner you can see we have our clipboard installed now what's the next thing dock toggle Again, it's installed. 
on the top right you can see this gear icon once you click on it you can hide your dock and if you hover over to this side it will pop up just like usual what this is doing is it's just turning on the intelligent hide option we can always turn it on and keep it persistent what's next GTK title bar this is a little special I will try and explain what this is trying to do before we install notice our OBS over here it have written something like this OBS 27.3 this headline over here what this new extension GTK title bar is going to do is it will remove this title bar from every application this is extremely useful when we are using blender or other software packages see here it's gone it's there when we are minimized or not in the full screen mode if it's turned on it will just not show that title bar how cool is that right we need every bit of space we can get now what's the next thing hide top bar hide top bar it's again an extension which will hide our top bar which basically shows the time but we want to customize it very much or we have to make some real big customizations to it but let's add our final add-on and we will customize it later That's right. Now let's see. Just go over to your utilities and you can uh, you can access your extension application from this menu. Once you access it, you can go and turn off your hide top bar. We will be making some customizations to this and we'll be adding a keyboard shortcut to this later on so that we can turn it on and off whenever we need. First let's customize our status area horizontal spacing. <clears throat> on the extensions you can click over to this status area horizontal spacing and its settings just reduce the padding all the way to zero or the minimum possible I like it this way because it will simply it will simply kill all the space in between I like it this way I don't like it taking up so much space I really like it making or staying compact that's the main reason is that because I don't see this menu more often or often at all. I'll be hiding this top bar most of the times when working with applications and whenever I see, I prefer to see it compact. I know the spacing is not even, but still, this works well. Doing all these steps, what I'm going to do next is I have this script called height top bar dot sh this is a very simple script when running this script it will simply 
toggle our hide top bar extension which is this extension over here we have turned it off now if you run this script from the terminal it will turn it on and if we run it again it will turn it off it's basically a toggle I got this script from I really forgot it where but it's from I just searched in Google how to toggle and searched or browsed a lot and stumbled upon this I saved this script I really forgot otherwise I would have made or mentioned the credits so whoever wrote this script thank you so much but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to my keyboard shortcuts so whenever I press a certain keyboard shortcut I want to toggle it on and off this is because I often like to work with my full screen but I don't want to turn on the full screen inside the app I want my screen to be full screen by default so that's it let's see how we can do what I just said toggling between this without going to the extensions every time and toggling it on and off in order to do that let's see what we have to do first we have to understand what is this script how to run this script in a terminal for that just go over to where you have saved your hide top bar script now go to that folder and right click and open in terminal yes as usual I have saved it to my apps folder now if I list the files I can see the hide top bar as such it's not green it's not executable yet we have to give it the permission to execute as a program this is just so that we can run it now if we list our files again you can see our high top bar asset is green which means we can execute it or run it how we basically run it is like this dot slash and just copy paste the script name that should do it if we do it again it will turn it back on see that maybe you cannot see it properly now yes that's it so basically we have to add this command to a shortcut this is really handy and really easy let's see how we can do that on the settings you have keyboard shortcuts or keyboard where is it mm. yeah keyboard now if you scroll down you can see keyboard shortcuts and I like to add a custom shortcut I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add first thing called hide top bar as you can see it's asking for the command hmm let's try let's try adding like this apps I'm just gonna copy this thing okay this tilde key slash apps slash this one okay I'm not yet sure which shortcuts to use but let's see I'm using Windows F2 yeah super key plus F2 key super F2 yes in Linux we do not say the Windows key we call it the super key okay I'm gonna add it let's let's see if it's working properly I'm not very sure yeah it's not working properly there is a reason for that I anticipated it 
and the reason for that is we have to make it properly we have to type the command properly you may think that this command it's working flawlessly yes on the terminal it's working flawlessly but we have to actually enter our command properly if you go to this thing over here you can right click to see the properties this is the parent folder home abirite apps this is basically a username you're over here okay you just copy this whole thing and I'm going to replace the first part of this home username apps and enter a slash now dot slash hide top rsh let's see if this works windows f2 yeah it's working to see it properly i'm going to maximize this window and yes this is working and also i like to customize it just like we did before um let's turn it on first and i like to turn on i like to turn this off okay this this keeps it much simple we don't want our intelli hide for this thing because we are controlling it manually so we don't need it properly or we don't need it at all to work like intelli hide or we don't need it to turn this on Huh. there is one more thing you could do there is this thing called toggle it toggling it's different from triggering our shortcut there is an option to toggle it hmm. let's see how we can do that Oh, yeah in this settings of high top bar on the keyboard shortcuts we have an option to enable shortcuts you can play around with this and try this yourself for instance if I assign it a shortcut like super Z okay you cannot see that over here because if I just click on this and enter super Z it's doing that but we cannot see that for some reason and it's behaving in a buggy way right now anyway I don't like this if I click on super Z it just pops up whenever that is one small thing to note is that whenever you are shutting down your computer or when you're gonna restart your computer try to make sure your hide top bar you know you have to make your top bar visible before restarting your system this will solve a lot of problems already we cannot access it when <laughs> it's hidden or you could change the options for that if you do not like let's see on the settings we have IntelliHide and all right this show panel when mouse approaches edge of the screen that's it once you turn this on you can access it even if it's turned off yeah that is also handy very handy when you're doing something like when you're inside a program and you quickly want to access it this is a good way to access it instead of this windows z and accessing it that's much better you know 
I think I have to remove my shortcut I have set up. Okay. As you can see, it's stuck. Whenever I set a shortcut, it's stuck. Maybe it's waiting for me to enter a new shortcut, but I don't want to enter a new shortcut. If something goes wrong and if a program freezes, there are a couple of ways to solve it. The easiest way you can approach is go to this panel and quit. This works most of the time. And if it's not, we will learn all those things along the way. Yes, I will make videos on how to approach when our system freezes. There is something else I wanted to show you. When it's full screen, when we have hidden our top bar using Windows F2, when it's hidden and you want to grab this menu, or this window you cannot grab it by going to the top to grab it you have to go to the top and hold your super key or windows key and then you can grab it using our left click hold if you simply try to grab it using the left click hold you cannot do it properly you have to use your That's it. One more cool thing. This is how my Firefox looks like. Let's see how I set this up like this. I don't want any news feed. So basically you got this gear icon here and turn everything off and on the manage settings you have to turn off web search if it's on you can see this thing over here I don't want it so I just turn it off that's all okay there is one more thing I wanted to mention and it's the pocket there is this service by Firefox it's called getpocket.com it's basically pocket I save every good blogs I find here on the Google or on the internet I just save everything useful one good thing about it is we can tag everything for instance we can tag it like blender Linux whatever topics you want so that's it and these are some very great blogs and you can start it you can start reading it right away or rather when you encounter a problem you can start reading it this will solve half of your issues that you come up for instance if you don't know how to set up a desktop shortcut or if you don't know how to add an application to this menu it's very easy but if somebody didn't tell you at first it would be very difficult to figure out by yourself so these blogs I will link them all in the description and yeah I wanted to show one thing I wanted to disable this weather thing or this thing it's the weather I mean who needs that right view original and it's a reddit post obviously so here i'm going to disable this weather weather dot desktop it's an extension which comes pre-installed but i don't like it so i'm just going to remove it or disable it okay this command what does it do sudo mv mv for move and we are moving this thing and we are renaming it basically that's all 
So I'm going to copy paste it to my terminal. Windows T for terminal. No, super T, super key plus T. Whenever there is a command with sudo, make sure you understand what the command is. Because otherwise, it could be dangerous if you're not sure or if you do not trust the source from where you're getting your Linux commands. You should not run it probably and you should not run any program using sudo permission. This is how Linux can get hacked. Yes, Linux can also get hacked if you are not careful. But it is not like Windows. You know, Windows we keep installing things and Windows in itself is bloated. Linux have much more control over everything just like we did here and yeah I will link all of these blogs in the description the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to customize this whole window okay so how should I customize it Mm, I want to remove everything from over here and make this home directory or library home. I want to turn this to exclusively for the apps I use very often, which are obviously apps like Blender, Substance Designer, Substance Painter. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to move all this to another folder. Okay, I want to keep it at the end, so I'm going to say, I'm going to rename it to Z folder. Everything I do not use, I just want to move it there. That's it. Now we have our home library clean. Now we can add any apps we want here. Also, I'm going to create another home folder. This is to add apps which are not main apps, but I still use them. For instance, Pop Shop, OBS calculator and extensions what else what else what else anything else ah system monitor that's it these are the apps which i often use which are apart from my working apps or the apps I used to do 3D. Also there is one neat thing about Pop OS or any other Linux distro. You can assign shortcuts to open certain applications. For instance, you have you might have noticed pressing super T it opens up your terminal and super b it's for browser i'm going to change this for blender and i'm going to change my browser to super r right now it doesn't open up anything so let's see how we can change our browser from super b to super r and how we can set up later our blender to this super b shortcut on settings if you go to keyboard we have view and customize shortcuts. We have the launchers over here. The home is for super F. Super F, it means our home directory or the file manager. And 
the email cli email client is for e i'm going to remove it i don't know i do not use it launch terminal i'm going to keep it search it's disabled help browser no i do not use it much home folder and terminal and we have our browser i'm going to add another shortcut or let's see let's customize it i'm going to set it to windows or super key r and set oh we gotta remove one shortcut remove super b this will clear up the shortcut for us to use for the blender now if we click on super r it will open up our browser how cool is that huh there is one more thing i almost got used to it so much when our browser is turned on or any application it's turned on if you hit super q it will quit it windows r or super r to open up our browser and super q to quit it this is really handy you might be thinking alt f4 is not doing the thing alt f4 it's for windows and for us it's super q that's it okay here's one more feature of pocket when a web page is open and you see this save to pocket icon on the right side if you just click on it it will automatically save to our pocket and you can add a tag here blender now click on enter and enter again to save it this will save to pocket but you know if you don't want it you can remove it always that was it now I want my I want to install my blender I'm going to move it to the apps folder now I'm going to extract it here simply yeah that was quick now I can delete or I would like to keep this blender <laughs> tar.exe file maybe I'll need it later I don't know but for the time being yeah we could keep it he could just simply hit or double click on this thing not this okay this one to run blender that works right out of the box and I like to change my spacebar action to tools that's it everything else is cool but I'm not going inside blender right now I will show you everything else later inside blender but for now let's see what we can do to make blender come up to over here and also what can we do to make blender come up when we hit super p super b for blender basically a keyboard shortcut how to set it up let's see first of all we need to edit our blender.desktop file Okay, just double click and we can edit it okay 
here on the line 82 you can see ex is equal to blender something something what i'm gonna do is i'm going to enter the path of my blender binary executable properties if you want to quickly access the properties you could windows i no no i think control i yeah control i for properties of any file just select everything and copy now in our text editor just control v to copy it make sure the path you enter is correct if it's not correct it will not be added that's all here also for our icon i'm going to rename it blender.svg and why is and why is that because we have an svg file over here right and the path is same as this file so i just copy pasted it here there is no need to get overwhelmed by all these things this is just comment or you could remove it if you want <laughs> you know not everything but you could remove most of this stuff and it will still work let's see should i remove it no let's keep it or should we i don't know it's not gonna affect blender anyway these two things ex ex easy and icon this thing in itself should fix or this is the first step to set up our shortcut now go ahead and save this file now we have our blender desktop file i'm going to copy this and i'm going to home and to show hidden folders click on control h yes when we hit Control H, it will show these folders. And on this, go to dot local share applications. Now paste your blender.desktop file here. Once you do that, you should see Blender. Yeah, that's there. That was quite easy, right? okay now let's see is it running on my discrete gpu or is it running on my integrated gpu video memory yeah it is running on my discrete gpu or nvidia gpu that's for sure because it's 6 gb you know if it's not 6 gb it would show 8 gb <laughs> I know that's a bug, but that's not a big deal. Right now, everything is working great. Now, how do we add Blender to our shortcut? Super B, right? Okay. We want to figure out what command opens up Blender. In terminal, what command will open up Blender? Hmm. That's a tricky question. We could always run Blender from over here. Apps, this folder. Yeah, we could run this binary on the terminal and it will open up Blender, but I'm not very sure it will run the discrete GPU. See here, it's using our integrated gpu that's why it's showing 8 gb actually integrated gpu is never 8 gb it is simply showing a bug or misinformation i would say so right now i'm sure it's running on my integrated gpu but anyway that's quite enough for a tiny task like this but that's not the full speed of blender if you want to get the full speed of blender we better make sure that 
it's run using the discrete GPU okay this might sound very crazy but why not just access it from here why should we why should we assign a shortcut for opening a blender all this might seem really really pointless at first but trust me once if it's something you use every day you don't want to be going there and clicking clicking we have to try and make accessing our favorite programs as effortless as possible that's my motive here so that's why i'm assigning a shortcut to blender and i also wanted to run using my discrete gpu if you run it from here it will be on your discrete gpu and why is that because in our dot desktop file it's mentioned to run it from discrete gpu prefers non default gpu oh that's all but there is a way to run it using our non default gpu it is kind of a long shot or it is not straightforward way but it's still very easy once you know how to set it up you don't have to set it up every time it's just you do it once and it's there forever so let's see what i know how to set it up blender to open up using our discrete gpu there is some commands i saved on my pocket let's see yes this is a this is a github repo from pop os or system 76 this is basically showing us how we can always run an application using the nvidia graphics or how to tell how to tell our command prompt that we need to use it we need to run this program always using the discrete GPU. So it's a simple command or it's a simple command right now. We'll make it into a script. Let's see. I'm going to copy this thing and going to my text editor and pasting it over here. And I'm going to change my Firefox or I'm going to replace it with my blenders path how do we do that okay you could just copy paste it from here exec equal to home username apps blender until here just copy and paste it after prime so it's a simple command it's basically setting an alias for this word prime for this prime we are using this nvidia graphics card if you ask me what this is i'm not sure but i have tried it before and i know this will toggle nvidia graphics mode for the application we are launching after using the prime command so that's all this should do it now let's save it somewhere where should we save it hmm. yeah i'm going to create a new folder over here that would be much better i think oh yeah i will just paste it over here that's much easier to access blender.sh okay i have saved it here now you can exit out of everything you know if we are doing it for every app 
we might need to reconsider creating a new folder to keep everything organized let's do it right now what should we call it scripts hmm that's shit mm, I'm going to move my scripts to this folder and mind you we have to change the path of our height top bar dot sh like we did before let's see what we can do on the settings go to keyboard and we and customize shortcuts we have our custom shortcut hide top bar right on the command we have to add or change our path that's it that was easy now I'm going to copy this thing the first part of our path okay you'll know why very soon I'm going to paste it and enter blender.sh or no dot slash blender.sh name blender okay setting the shortcut to super b and adding it that's all now let's test it windows p no it's not running blender why is that let's see let's run it from the terminal ah we have not given executable permission to our blender dot sh that's why okay permission given now let's try again windows b yeah that was real quick blender and it's also running from our discrete gpu here you go that's it how do we download unreal engine and how do we download and set up unreal engine inside linux let's see first you have to go to this website www.unrealengine.com slash en hyphen us slash linux that's it i will link it in the description just go there and you can see it will first ask you to log in to your Apex Games account. If you don't have an account, you have to create one. Okay, let me log in first. So I have logged in here and here we have our recommended system. It shows Ubuntu 22.04, 64-bit. Our pop OS is based on Ubuntu 22.04, so we are good to go. And graphics card with greater than or equal to 8 GB memory, mine is 6 GB. What? That's enough. Actually, the configuration or minimum requirement for Windows is much lower, but I don't know why it's mentioned like 8 GB over here. But it should work fine in Linux. Trust me, because Linux always uses the resources much more wisely than Windows. So it should work. And also 60 GB free disk space. Hmm. That's interesting. And you have to note here that we need to download 22.15 GB. And if you do not have a really fast internet connection or just in case your internet connection gets cut off in the middle you'll have to download everything from the start so that's why i recommend you guys install xdm or extreme download manager i haven't installed it so let's go ahead and install it i'm going to download it from the github
I'm going to move it to the apps as always extract it here once it's extracted I'm going to delete the tar file oh this is a script let's see the properties it have execution permission so we just have to install it from the terminal and so ls okay just type in dot slash install dot sh oh we need root permission here i trust this application so much so i don't mind giving it root permission so sudo and that command okay installation completed you could delete this if you want okay I'm gonna delete it uh, we don't need it anyways XDM yeah extreme download manager let's install our add-on now we need the add-on because in order to capture links download links from the browser we need the browser add-on that's all yes it it needs access to all your data for the websites or for, or access your data for all websites access browser tabs this highly depends on you and if you do not want it you can always go ahead and continue without installing it Now let's see is it on or is it capturing any link you can know that if you click download if it starts downloading directly it means you need to reboot your computer okay I'm going to click out of it okay I need to reboot it Okay, we are back we have our extreme download manager I'm going to move it to my home the folder I created and let's open up our browser using super R okay I'm having to accept the conditions okay cool I'm accepting it maybe earlier I didn't accept it that's why it could have been like that like not capturing the links for download just go back to our unreal engine website let's see let's download let's see if it's capturing right now yeah it is capturing why did we install XDM in the first place you know in my area I only have internet speed of around 4 MB per second so if I'm downloading something really big and I need and if in case it just happens that the internet connection it's cut off in the middle I can simply resume my download using the functions in XDM that's something you gotta play around and figure out for yourself something like this along like refresh link resume pause all these functions are there so that's really handy yes now we have to wait till it's finished downloading and see you then in the meantime i'm going to install steam from our pop shop 
yes I have my substance apps on steam so that's where I go to install this steam I always go for the Debian package instead of Flatpak just a personal preference I don't know why it's taking a while for this or oh, maybe it's because we are downloading Unreal Engine in the background yeah that should be slowing things down And our steam is now ready oh my god it's also downloading an update cool cool just go ahead and update fast you know steam you don't need an instruction for steam you know how it works right just go ahead and install the program or soft as you have inside steam and we are good to go just in case you don't have substance apps inside steam um, there is a tricky way to get it yes I will talk more about in another video because it could be taken down it is not legal technique so it could be taken down so just in case I don't want to ruin this video so I will talk about it in the next video like how do you install substance apps if you don't have it inside steam basically it's piracy or you could also use the license but there is a caveat here we will look into it hey welcome back so I thought while these things are downloading why not explore something else so that's why I decided to show you a neat app or application on our pop shop you know you can go here and type in to do to do okay and there is something called Endeavor, I don't know what is it. I saw something here. I want to install a deb package, that's why I'm looking for something which has a deb package. And yeah, this one has, but it looks like an email. Wait, I will simply type in to space to to do ah here you go 
this is the gnome to do this is a really simple application no fancy features just a simple to do to do cool that's it I have installed it so just in case you're wondering which to do I'm using honestly I don't use it but right now I want to explore some shortcuts and also I want to set up some shortcuts we have already set up super B for our blender so let's tick it or how do I say let's cross that off our list now let's explore some shortcuts that's what we want to do I want to set these shortcuts later for unreal substance painter and substance designer yes if you notice why I'm using these letters E S D and B E for the engine in unreal engine as S for the substance painter and D for substance designer now all of these letters it can be entered using our left hand just one hand you don't have to all of these are on the left side of the keyboard so it makes it a lot easier to enter the shortcut just using one hand that's why I chose these letters I could have chosen super U for unreal engine and um, something else for others but I chose these letters carefully so that's it we will be setting up these shortcuts soon I mean I don't know yet we will do <laughs> we'll figure out along the way and let's explore the shortcuts because I highly doubt that these shortcuts may already be using used by some other functions so let's see okay let's discover on the settings tab let's see let's type in super And I'm looking for E S and B super E S D as you can see here there are a lot of shortcuts which use the super key I'm not going to change or alter any of them also I don't use these shortcuts very often to be honest I never use these default shortcuts but it may be handy depending on what you do so if there is something you do over here which is very often you could make use of the shortcuts but you don't have to make use of every shortcut that's kind of absurd for instance I always use the terminal so I use super T to launch it and also for launching the home folder I use super F and for launching the browser super R that's pretty self-explanatory because these three things you often use right and also I have removed the shortcut for the browser yeah where was it yeah the launcher we had the email client launch email client as super e but since we have removed that I think we have our space reserved for these shortcuts so we won't have any problems when we are reserving shortcuts or when we are setting up these shortcuts so that was about the exploration and yeah I think I needed to tell one more thing there is something called Windows F8 or Alt F8 I, for, I forgot totally there is something like that let's see no that's not it alt f7 is it that or no 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 there was something I really forgot that there was a really neat shortcut yeah you could right click it and always on top if you are wondering how this is staying all always there even if it's there okay, always on top feature it's a pretty common feature and I have enabled it for this 
but what if it's something like steam and yeah look at here we cannot right click to enable it yeah some applications we need to use the windows f8 what was that key i totally forgot i need to make maybe i'll need to do some research what was that shortcut Okay, I'll get back once I figure out what was that. Hey. Hey, so I found a blog and it was quite easy. I was quite embarrassed on finding out what the shortcut was. It was not Alt F8 or F7. It was Alt Space. If you, if you enter into any window and click on Alt Space, you get this pop-up. That's it and you can click on always on top for any window and for instance there that's it alt space and you get this menu and there is one neat trick just like anything we can add it to a keyboard shortcut to toggle it on and off and I haven't installed it okay let's set up that right now okay here it's saying that we have to install this thing WM control is it really hmm. I don't know what's that what is WM control Okay, WM Control is a Unix or Linux program that lets you interact with X Window Manager and allows you to manage the windows and user inputs of the system. Yeah, cool, fine. Windows T, and I'm gonna install this. You might be thinking, why am I doing all these things? I could just let go of this right how oh, should i have a shortcut for simply always on top feature i don't know i just like to try out things that's all let's see now we have to set up our shortcuts go to system settings i think i already have wm control i just think so i don't know keyboard shortcuts tab and custom shortcuts right But let's try out this command. It needs this package WM control. So I think it was not a mistake installing it. But let's see. Custom shortcuts. What's it? Always on top. Command is this one. Oh, I gotta clean up the command. That's it. I hope it is correct let's set the shortcut to windows or super space oh okay i don't want the super space to be used by anything else so i'll replace it switch to next input source oh that's already using r okay i'll just replace it that's all and now let's see can we toggle it on Yes, 
it did toggle wow always on top maybe it's not toggling properly i don't know let's try again it's not currently it's not always on top feature turned on now let's see always on top it's toggling it on okay that's a good thing it's toggling it on but it's not toggling it off when we click it again it's not toggling it off that's the problem i face now but anyways, we could always go to Alt tab or Alt space and turn it off when we don't need it. You know, probably that's a good way, really. Windows space is really handy. So I'm glad I input or set this shortcut up. And yeah, just one simple package. That was all it's required. Always on top using super space key. That's all. That's really nice. Okay. I'm going to exit out of this. We have explored enough shortcuts for today. Cool. Now once our Unreal and Substance apps are ready, we will start setting up the programs and also the shortcuts and there is something else i wanted to mention there are some apps you'll need to install like after installing any linux distro you have to go through a certain series of process just to set things up for your usage linux is mostly like a base or GNU Linux is like a base for you to build upon. It is not always customized for your use, but you can do it. You no, know, they give you the freedom. That's why. Mm, X Archiver. Yes, X Archiver. This can unzip RAR and other compressed file formats. Now, right now, we cannot unzip error file from the default applications in the pop you can either install 7zip or this one i prefer x archiver so that's it yeah that will be installed There are a lot of apps like I could install Chimp or Gimp, I would say. And I don't recommend installing Blender from PopShop because they won't be very updated right off the bat. Where is Gimp? There will be, you can just search for it, right? There are a lot of applications available. Well, I don't use it. I don't use most of it. I haven't tried much of these things. Except for the color picker, I think. Yes. I was using this color picker, I think. A simple color picker. You know, I'd really like to have a shortcut for my color picker. That would be much better. Okay.
Okay, this is interesting. We can set a shortcut for this, for sure. I don't know why it's glitchy. Yeah, even if my mouse is not moving, it's glitchy. But that's okay. It's zoomed in too much. But as long as it's working, I'm good with it. <laughs> oh, this have some settings. Let's see. Is it working properly, the color picker? I think no. It's not working properly. Okay, I'm gonna remove it. Because it's doing some window transitions and everything. Like, it's not very stable, I think. Let's try out something else. I have tried this application before, so I think this should be fine. Yeah. Let's see how stable is it. Cool, no glitches, and even we can save colors, that's great. And I wonder if I can set up a keyboard shortcut for this. Hmm. That's kinda unfortunate. It would be great if there is a shortcut for color picking, but I'll just keep it in my home. Mm, I don't like to clutter up my home with so many applications. Maybe I'll move the calculator over to the last thing, last folder. Ah, much better. Color picker, yeah, this is it. Working fine. It's working fine. You know, you could simply make it something like super space it here and yes, you could pick color from anywhere. Oh, that's what I want to believe, but oh my God, it's not doing it right. Maybe it's this window, it's very interactive with the other applications, I don't know. So you may be thinking why I'm showing you all these things, all these steps I do, all the mistakes I do. Why not just show what works, right? Yeah, I could do that, but then you'll be thinking, oh, I don't know how to work with Linux. That is so unfortunate. You know, you have to be some kind of a nerd or a geek. No, no. It's just about trying things out. You just have to be patient with some of these things. That's all. And these things are like planting a seed. Once you plant it, you don't have to plant it all the time. You know, you just have to nurture it. Once it's planted, it's done. And once you set this up, you know how to do it again. It's not big, that big of a deal. But the first time, it takes some time. That's all. Let's see, let's see.
should I have a color picker or yeah there is one more thing I have to show you guys there is this online accounts in the settings and this is really handy connect your data in the cloud what we can do is we can link our Google Drive to show up in this one our home folder our Google Drive will show up in the home folder if we connect our account that's it I will go ahead and connect my Google account so I'll just pause the video so here I have connected my Google account and I don't want the calendar contacts documents photos and printer I don't want these things I normally don't use the mail but I want to try that out let's see how the mail client of GNU is GNU Linux or GNU pop the files is very obvious you can see that here right now you can see my Google Drive account that's it if I click or click on here you could see something like this yes this is my Google Drive and it's accessed right from my file browser okay that's cool and what's next a oh, mail let's see how it works Geary that's it right okay okay let's see maybe it's loading up maybe I think I will keep it this seems to be really cool <laughs> And also I have heard people say good things about this what is it yeah Gary right I think I'm right Gary yes I have people say good opinions about this Gary or the default mail client in Linux so I think I'll just use it why not anyway I don't like Gmail that much it's boring I kind of got used to it so it's really boring <laughs> okay anyway this will make it easier for me to access my gmails I could assign a keyboard shortcut to it anytime that's it that's one more handy feature inside GNU or pop OS GNU pop uh, what is GNU? People might be saying, what is GNU? Let's see. I'm not sure of the full form. <laughs> what is GNU? Full form. GNU is not Unix. <laughs> That's a weird full form, right? GNU is not Unix. Unix, yeah. Unix, okay. What is Unix, by the way? Unix is a proprietary client I think it was like the early day operating systems so great and why GNU GNU and Linux are like we always say Linux 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 or simply we never say this GNU thing GNU is really like how do I say I'm not sure of it myself okay what is GNU in Linux Actually, 
we often say Linux softwares, but actually it's GNU software. All these things are GNU softwares. And Linux is the kernel of our most Linux distros. These are really technical stuff. I don't know that myself, so I would rather <laughs> I'm not explaining, okay? I would rather not explain it. You can Google it yourself. And I think this is one of the main reasons why people often say Linux instead of GNU Linux. Yeah, lack of information or lack of clarity, I would say. I'm not a programmer myself. These are like things I just tinker around and figure out myself. Or from the internet yeah we forgot to set up our battery percentage right power show battery percentage that should do it and is there something else I want to set up power button behavior hmm I like to set it to suspend instead of powering off that's it blank screen and also this thing automatic suspend I'm going to set it to one hour I don't like my computer sleeping when I'm giving it a task which will take a long time and blank screen five minutes is cool And what else? Yes. You know, there is this habit of setting power button to power off, but I personally prefer suspend for the power button behavior. There's a reason for that. You know, if just in case your computer freezes, there is something you can do. That's called waking up the elephant or raising the elephant, I think racing the elephant raising the elephant Linux this is it racing skinny elephant is utterly boring racing skinny elephants is utterly boring that's it So basically what this does is if you click or if you press alt control backspace this is for windows right alt control backspace i think i don't know i'm not pressing any of these because if i do that it will reboot so what i have to do is come up with something or let's see Hold down the left alt key and print screen key and press each of these letters in order. Okay, what you have to do is alt print screen. Okay, just hold it and by holding it, you have to press on R racing elephants. Oh no, 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 R S I. No, no, just here from here. RS racing skinny elephants is utterly boring okay racing skinny elephants is utterly boring if you do that it will force reboot your computer it will force reboot your system I have to write it down somewhere <laughs> otherwise I'll forget oh probably we have the to do why not let's do it here hmm what is it Racing skinny elephants is utterly boring. Okay. Alt plus print screen.
that's it racing skinny elephant is so utterly boring is i think there is no so let's see control shift t i think or let's see the history yeah racing skinny elephants is utterly boring it's a six letter word okay that's it I have it saved. Now I'm going back. Okay, we have spent a lot of time exploring stuffs, shortcuts, and all these things. And our Unreal Engine is still downloading. Whoa. 6 MB per second. When did that happen? I thought my internet is 4 MB per second maximum. I don't know. Once it's done, I have to install Substance Painter as well. Yes, this is an old version of Substance Painter I got on Steam. Let's try one more thing. I have something called, let's see if our blend files are opening in Blender. What do I mean by that? I have some projects I have done. Maybe this one. Let's copy. Yeah, it's done. Now, I think by default it will it will not open up. We have to set things up. Open with other application, view all applications. Yes, there we go. We have Blender. Ah, cool. It opens up. That was really quick. You know. There was a situation when I didn't find Blender from this application panel. But here it was easy, I think. I think we did the installation of Blender really well. You know, it's basically dependent on that desktop file, dot desktop file we set up. There is some, yes, there is some parameters or Let's see what I mean. You know, talking about it in vague terms is not going to help anyone. Let's see what I mean. Yes, this MIME type thing. This is what determines whether the application will show up when we set up certain file types to open up with Blender. That's it. If this if this thing is not properly entered, you know, we cannot make it work properly. And I have to admit, I don't know how to set it up for Substance Designer or Substance Painter. That's kind of unfortunate, right? <laughs> but let's see if I can try and get it working. I'll have to do some research in the background. So here you go, there is something else which happened recently. Uh, right now, just right now. Our Substance Paint, or no, no. Our Unreal Engine, it, it stopped downloading, but it's paused at 76%. So I'm trying to refresh the link for downloading. So basically just refresh this page of Unreal Engine. That's why I didn't close it. And I'm trying to get it 
to refresh the link. Okay, you can see here, new download link is accepted. Now, we don't have to download it all the way from the beginning. We can just resume it. Yay, that's working perfectly. This is why we downloaded XDM in the beginning. Hey, so while we are at it, so while we are at it, let's see how we can customize our blender. You know, I'm kind of bored. These things are downloading and I thought, let's play around with Blender. Let's set it up. Cool. Okay, first things first, I don't like this animation window cluttering up. I'm not into animation, so I don't need this window. Oh God. Okay, that's it. I've already made a video on this. So if this is just what you want to do, you could you could refer that video or uh, it's some videos I think. So I'm not going to explain much of what I'm doing here. Okay, but you can always follow along. Just pause. Okay, I'll just keep an overview. I'm just changing the color to matte cap or lighting to matte cap and color to random and turning on the cavity to both and also let's see we can hide that dock and also our top bar using super f2 like we set up that's it now i'm gonna delete everything AXD that's it AXD I'm just used to it like in the muscle memory <laughs> okay go to edit preferences on the interface let's change it to 1.25 okay uh, this is not very big or maybe it is kind of Thing 1.2 should be good now let's go for 1.23 and you know yeah I like to keep things like this yeah this is fine where is it where is it here one two three that's a good number and if you haven't set up your shortcut or spacebar action to tools you better set it up or if you're not into like what i'm doing i'm mostly into using substance unreal and all that stuff so mostly related to games or game environments that's what I'm trying to focus and not primarily animation or other th other things like effects in blender not that okay so this is why I stick with this spacebar action to tools what this does is whenever you click spacebar you get this bunch of menus it's basically the same over to the left I'm gonna hide it using T you know I don't have the screencast keys installed yet but that's fine we're not going to model or do some heavy stuff right now we're just tinkering around and setting up things you know earlier in blender i don't know which version it was there used to be a version where the settings would also be saved along with the blend file i think that option is gone Anyway, that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. We can always set it up, right? Okay, now what else do we have to set up? Navigation, yes. Turn on this auto perspective and auto depth. Hmm, okay, auto depth. 
and also orbit around selection. Zoom to mouse position. I think that is important. Yes, also that. Or I think no. I don't know. I'm not very sure yet. Let's see. Let's create a cube. Zoom to mouse position. Oh, okay. Zoom to mouse position is very essential. Cool. And orbit around selection. That's what I use. So if we have it turned on, your selection will or your screen will rotate like this. I find it much much in control or much better even if we have multiple objects let's say okay wait a second I'm just gonna create some objects Okay, just quickly creating objects. Cool. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's see. If you're rotating around like this, it's rotating in weird random ways. We don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna in, insert an empty over here. Empty, yes. Now if I rotate, this is perfect. As you can see, we have our rotate around selection turned on or orbit around selection turned on it's all because of this I have my empty unselected right now so now if I try to rotate this is the state of rotation now if it's selected it rotates like this this is much more beautiful right it's simple and it's beautiful that's it now what else do we have to change Mm, key map I don't use much of custom shortcuts yes I do have some quick favorites that I have to set up okay select all toggles navigation input nope nope no nope. yes add-ons I have to install some add-ons as well okay let's get them now or let's try and install what's already pre-installed mm. what is the first thing loop tools loop tools and bool tools bool tool okay now what is next I could add Archimesh but I'm not adding it no Wrangler this is highly highly Okay, node presets and node arrange also. <laughs> I don't use them yet, but I feel like I'll just turn it turn them on later on. Maybe I don't know. I'm not that heavy on geometry nodes yet. Yes, I like geometry nodes. Or even the usual node setups in Ah oh, materials. Yes, that's it. Grease pencil, I don't use it much. Real snow scatter objects, skinify. No, no, I don't use them yet, or I don't know yet. A tiny cat. This is really handy. This has some really good functions. And also F2. F2 is for like repeated action or repeated filling of faces 
this is really handy now i cannot explain everything like why it is used you know it won't make much of a sense just by me talking about it i should give a solid demonstration of it otherwise it's not going to be it's not going to be that clear right okay cool now i want to bring my add-ons from my google drive downloads no google drive blender add-ons just copy to documents no i should install it or paste it here blender add-ons okay there is something about blender add-ons blender add-ons are all under the license of blender that is there is something like the blender add-on should be free and open source free means free as in free speech not free beer free means the freedom to use and change it or modify it but the add-ons right now they are not developed just by blender so whenever someone is investing money and developing some add-ons they they almost all all the time ask for money but that's all that's all really fine okay blender kit and all that add-ons like that of blender guru also i forgot what the add-on was polygon yeah that polygon add-on all those are really great you know there is always it is always worth it to pay for the add-ons and these are some add-ons i just personally use and not all of them i don't use much of them these were some old add-ons too and let's see which add-ons am i going to use i want to clean up these add-ons i don't use most of these i was i just want to try i just wanted to try these out so i downloaded and tried them out and i was trying if it could work for me okay i don't need these add-ons cat transform beta um i don't use it much cat transform i just wanted to learn it but no i don't use it much shortcut vr master no not that i use screencast keys these days construction chocofer model man this is really great you know this is just the add on and you could use it for saving your assets or creating a collection of your assets okay look at it like this blender beam no i don't use it at all cad sketcher no i don't use cad blender kit that's a great add-on that's a great add-on you should try it okay chocofer and blender kit anyway i don't use blender kit these days and neither this construction lines neither this quick menu uv squares and screencast these are the three add-ons that i use and i hope the, all these three are open source and you can download them all for free from the github pages okay cool i have decluttered almost everything i don't need now let's go to apps blender add-on let's select everything and install add-on okay uv square that's installed what about quick menu no it's not installed i think we have to install it one by one that's fine screencast yeah 
that's all I need. Hmm. Now I just forgot I could turn off the text info. And I could max even history to two. These are just personal preferences, but why not? Even history hold status. How about just the even history? What is this even history? Okay. Okay, we need both, I think. And also show last operator. Just the label would be fine, I think. Yeah, label is fine. Let's see if it works for, no, <laughs> that was something else I did. Like if I hit S, Z, it wouldn't show the Z on the screencast, but that's normal. That's how it's always been. Maybe three. Display time. Maybe four seconds. Hmm. Should I add a background? No. I should be fine without it. Okay, that's it. We got our we got our add-ons set up. Oh my god, our Unreal Engine is downloaded. Cool. Don't save. Now I'm going to start installing my Substance Painter. Okay, now we need to see. Unreal Engine. Let's move it to app or apps. around 23.8 GB hmm. yeah that's something I noticed you know Linux calculates 1000 MBS or this pop GNU pop OS it calculates 1000 MBS 1 GB that's why it's 23.8 usually it's 1024 for Windows I think that's not a bit to you. Windows alarm. No. Linux Unreal Engine extract here. Hmm. 
Yo, I could delete this telegram. I already installed it. And it is not something like Blender where we have to keep the files intact. Have you noticed this? We haven't installed Blender. We just running it every time from this folder. So it's not installation, it's like a portable file, right? Or portable installation. No, it's not installation, it's just a portable version of Blender. The Unreal is just the same, it's a portable version. That means we don't have to install it to run it. Only the Substance Painter, it's going to be installed. Or I think the Steam may be installing it. The Steam sets everything for us. It sets up everything for us. The keyboard shortcuts, not the keyboard shortcuts, but the desktop shortcuts. Yes, all of the shortcuts we need, it will be set up by Steam. But I'll, I think I'll need to tinker around even a bit after it's done. I want to change the name of Substance 3D Painter to Substance and also set up the keyboard shortcuts. Yes, we'll see what we can do at that time. And for now it's extracting. Honestly, I don't even know the basics of Unreal Engine. <laughs> I I installed it very long ago, but I never never played around with Unreal yet. I was kind of busy with Blender and learning the basics of it, and it took a lot of a lot more time than I expected. You know, I thought I could learn Blender in a couple days, but no, I took a lot of time. Maybe my habits, learning habits are not yet tuned. Okay, everything is just my <laughs> habits and mistakes while I'm learning. Just bad learning habits. Yes. That, that kind of had its cost. But something I noticed is that when I keep my system really fresh and installed and really decluttered, it really boosts my learning speed. Yes, that is true. Whenever I keep my system really clean, for instance, let me show. Hmm. Here we have the system monitor, right? If you go to the file systems, you can see um, the available space it's around it's not about the available space it's about keeping the system keeping the computer very much decluttered and keeping it as clean as possible I mean do not install anything which you would never use for instance, I would have to remove this to do later and also this color picker. Just tiny, tiny things, okay. These things really add up, you know, really add up. Okay, let's see what have we got here. Our Linux Unreal Engine, it's... How do we install it? Let me first find that file. This may be really intimidating, but it's not that big of a deal. 
there was instruction on how to run Unreal Engine and I I almost forgot which website it was let's go to Unreal no let's go to get pocket I have saved it there you know <laughs> you won't be getting these things when you go to get pocket <laughs> it is actually my saves or I have saved these things so I will get it but you may not this is not it unreal unreal I'm looking for instructions to install it or I could simply google how to install Unreal Engine in Linux uh, let's see here I should be able to recognize which binary I should execute right it was something like engine e N G I N E engine. Or Unreal Editor, I think. Unreal Editor, that's it. Open item location. Okay, cool. Let's see if this has the executable permission yes it has if I double click on this unreal editor yes that loads up the unreal okay I was right I didn't need to google too much so basically it's this go to your folder where you have extracted the unreal and then go to engine okay unreal has loaded up Okay, I'm gonna exit out or no just minimizing okay. go to where you have installed your unreal go to engines and binaries and Linux and you have to look for unreal editor unreal editor that should stand out because where is it unreal EFGHI okay here this is it so what you have to do every time is just double click on this and load it up and unreal will load up but let's make a shortcut for this okay let's make let's add this to our, let's add this to our homes or application shortcuts and also to our keyboard shortcut that should be fun hi I think so real fun that should be real fun hmm and if I'm correct if I'm right unreal is loading loaded using no I'm not playing around with unreal right now but if I'm right, I think Unreal by default loads up with the default or the dedicated graphics card. I'm not sure yet, but why not? Let's do the same steps we did for Blender over here. I'm going to the apps and right clicking and open a new tab. This is so that I can go to my Blender desktop and open it up and I'm going to create a new file by clicking this plus icon 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste something. Hmm. What should I copy paste? Should I copy paste all of this or should I get a new template? I think I should get a new template. That's it. Okay, I have something like that in my pocket. Linux. How to create desktop shortcuts. That's it. Hmm, this is it. I'm gonna copy this. Type application name no name we have to edit it name I'm gonna set it to Unreal Engine comment I'm gonna cross off that comment I don't want it hmm. what about icon Icon, icon, icon. Hey, wait a second. Let's move this name to the second entry or over here. I think the order does not matter, but still, just for keeping it clean. The executable file. What is the location of our Unreal editor? Just go to this thing called where I located this unreal editor control I to display the properties copy this thing and just paste it over here and don't forget to add a slash and enter the name of unreal editor exactly as in the files it's U and E capital Unreal Editor okay cool now we have to get an icon I like to hunt for some really cool icons let's see let's see if we can download an icon Unreal Engine transparent icon No, not this one. There should be some websites which provide it. Let's look at the images. Huh. This is what I want. Something like this. Let's see if I can actually get it and not the fake PNG. <laughs> let's visit this website okay luckily it's not a fake PNG just free download I don't trust this I think it's a fake PNG. <laughs> Not sure. Let's see. Let's view. No, it's not a fake PNG. <laughs> Luckily, it's not a fake PNG. You can see the transparent background. Or you can see through that, right? So it's not a fake PNG. I'm going to rename it using F2. Unreal.png. That's fine. Now let's cut or move it 
to our apps folder or unreals where should we paste it here inside this thing i'm going to paste it that should be much better and i'm going to copy the parent folder or the path of this and going to my text editor and replacing and making it unreal.png so take note here it's my path to the unreal.png that's it and the exe file or exe executable it's my path to the unreal editor you have to make sure it's your own path not mine okay <laughs> and terminal false hmm that should be fine they should do it but um, i think i want to make one more script or i'll edit it later on control s let's save it as unreal dot desktop dot desktop where should i save it for now i'm going to save it on the apps because we'll need to do some editing just right now okay what is the edit that i'm going to do i'm going to make this ex easy into a script that way we can ensure that whenever unreal is loaded it's from our graphics card and not the integrated graphics card it from our dedicated graphics card to make sure we are going to repeat the steps we did for blender it's basically just making a simple very simple script and replacing it with the ex easy i'm going to cut okay and paste it here prime right and what is prime alias okay i'll just copy paste it from where i got it let's go to my pocket here here we go alias prime equal to that one that's it that should be more than enough this is a script congratulations you are script kitty now <laughs> i'm going to save it as unreal.sh no unreal dot sh inside my scripts folder inside the apps and i have to enter the script path here let's see now we can toggle back to our script folder and give the permission to execute as a program to our unreal.sh okay cool now we just have to copy the path and for our unreal desktop okay unreal.sh that's it right unreal.sh this is the path of our script so this will try and execute the script or will it i think we need to like this control s unreal dot desktop is done unreal dot yeah okay take note here we have our path to our unreal.sh but before the unreal.sh i'm entering a period key followed by a slash 
this is how it basically runs inside the terminal let's see if we list our files using ls yes the unreal.sh it's green and if i simply hit unreal.sh will it work no but what if i copy this thing and actually not just that i want to remove this slash and power dot it's not working right prime command not found oh wait again prime command not found prime is not a command dummy it's an alias okay ex easy what should we do where should we keep our script we are going to execute this script and this script is this am i making things too difficult or harder or unnecessarily difficult i don't know let's see for ourselves it should be working right they should be working okay let's see here okay prime command not found we didn't encounter this issue in blender but why here are we doing it wrong let's see let's see I think we are not doing it anything wrong hmm I think we can stick to this default home thing for our desktop file our desktop file it doesn't have to be unnecessarily complicated that would be something I concur or agree with Now, now let's try and run our script hmm again this unreal.sh it's not working but what about our desktop file does it work let's copy this to where we copied it earlier to our local share applications and here just paste it now we have our unreal engine and launch using discrete graphics card yes that means by default it launches using our integrated graphics card that's unfortunate 
isn't it? Whenever it have an option to launch using discrete graphic card, that means it's by default launching with the integrated graphics card. Let's see what we have here. Launch using discrete. For this, launch using integrated graphics card. Okay, cool. Hmm. Maybe we miss something. Yes, for the desktop file, we could use this prefers non-default GPU. Yes. Let's see. Control SR desktop file. But we miss something. <laughs> we have to delete it and paste it again, I think. Or rather go to our apps that's because we copied it from here right and the only thing we saved or edited is this file on the apps so I'm going to have to paste it over again that's all yeah it's back yeah this by default it will launch using our dedicated graphics card that's set right now and also for our steam if you're a linux user you you should basically know that whenever something like this pops up you should allow launching that's it that's done Our Unreal is set. The desktop files for Blender and Unreal are set, but the Unreal shortcut, it's not running properly. What should we do? We cannot create a keyboard shortcut if it cannot run from the script. That's it. So open in terminal and unreal.sh prime command not found. What about blender.sh? Okay, so that's not the problem with blender, I think. Oh now I get it. This was never the problem of our script. It's simply that when we are running it using the terminal, it's missing something. Or let's try. If I hit super B, it should open up Blender right away. And it's open using my dedicated graphics card. That's evident by the VRAM, it's 0.8 out of 6 GB. That means it's using my NVIDIA graphics card, it's the 3060 and that's it. And we forgot something. Hey, we forgot to save our blend file, right? Recover, last session. There is no way to recover. Whatever, we'll need to save it. That was quite unfortunate because when I saw the Unreal downloaded and I was almost finished when <laughs> the blend file was set up, but I didn't save it to my default startup file. So that was really mean of me. <laughs> okay, I'll edit the video to make it better. What if I set up this unreal.sh as my script for, okay, I'm just going to set this up right now. Okay, let's make everything clear. What are we going to do now? We're going to set up the keyboard shortcut. This super E for unreal or engine. 
you could also set super u but i'm going for super e because i can access it quicker using super e as it's on the left side go to custom shortcuts and just unreal engine command what's the command okay it's home username apps scripts unreal.sh that's it and shortcut what should we set super e I'm going to add it and I'm going to test it right now right away super e is it launching unreal yes it is launching and I believe it's launching from the dedicated graphics card I sure believe it is <laughs> cool we have set up our shortcut for unreal that was quite simple although i wasted a lot of time tinkering around <laughs> wondering why it's not working in the terminal all right now it's left with our substance designer and substance painter i'm going to take a break now Before we go after our shiny Unreal Engine, let's let's fix one more setting and let's save it as our default startup file. We have the interface scale at 1.23 and we need to change the themes. Okay, go to 3D viewport and change the vertex color from the black thing to something like a very light blue that's how I like to call it yes make sure it's distinct from this edge sharp blue should be able to distinguish it from that yeah now I'm going down and increasing the vertex size from three to six pixels that's what i like this will greatly greatly enhance everything about your viewport you can view it here just if you look at it this is how it is this is much 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 better than the default settings yeah just save the preferences and exit out once everything is set up once all these steps are done you can confidently just set up the startup file and save startup file that's it you have done it oh no wait a second i have to delete this cube and now i can save the startup file again okay cool save it that's it now let's uh, don't save the scene and if I hit super key plus B blender opens up and this is our startup file if you want to make some tiny edits this is the best time to I could turn on these scene statistics yeah why not let's do it and yes I'm going to adjust it ever so slightly not very important but you could do it and if you're not getting a sense of what is what always bring up a monkey and you know this monkey the fate the direction which monkey faces it's always negative Y you can see the gizmo I don't use it so I hide the gizmo this is for my convenience but you could keep it if you want 
nothing against it all right that's about it i'm deleting the monkey and everything else and just saving up my startup file that's all that's it let's see why what happened when i couldn't save our settings and everything else into a single file what am i telling i mean i i really wish i could save this whole thing into one blend file and simply use that every time i reset my system but i think that feature is gone or i don't know okay anyways this have fixed my problem most of it i'm going to exit out of it so that's that Hey, so my break time is over. It took quite a while. All right. Let's see. When I'm back, I just noticed something. I don't like how big my dock is. So I want to reduce the dock size. And already it's at the smallest 36 pixel. But I want to reduce it even further. Maybe 30. 30 is great. Or 32 30 no 30 should be fine that's it yeah everything else is working yeah we have set up the shortcuts for uh, Unreal and what else yeah I wanted to change one more thing you know since our shortcut it's super e i would like to i would like to rename it to engine and let the u represent the unreal so i'm going to rename it to engine how do we do that we just got to rename it inside that file we saved that desktop file that's what we have to change inside dot local folder if you are not able to find it hit control H or control H that will toggle or uh, the hide or view for hidden folders okay inside dot local share applications we here we have saved our unreal dot desktop this is it so what do we have to change what do we have to change the unreal engine the name we have to change it from name engine to no unreal engine to simply engine and i'm going to add a comment this is because if you want to search unreal let it bring up control s Now I'm going to copy this. Also, we had our Unreal Desktop one saved here. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to paste something we just copied. The file we just edited. I'm going to paste it inside here. Okay, cool. Now, if I'm right, this should change pretty soon. Or maybe just after a restart, just so the files can recalculate, I think. Or maybe I can delete it and simply paste it back from somewhere else. For instance, from our control C. This should do it. This should do the trick. Yeah, engine. I like that. Okay. And everything else should be fine too. Let's see. Super E should launch our engine. Yeah, it's launching pretty quick too. That's what I like. 
and also if you might have noticed this engine <laughs> it have the icon as the default black and white icon this cannot be changed i think this is the by default logo of it so for here the viewing purpose i could use this logo but for the default or if you are into looking in this dock while working yes that cannot be changed unfortunately that's the issue or it could be changed but i'm not going to too deep too deep into that i mean i really don't know how to change it and i know it takes a lot of tinkering around and figuring things out no let's focus on what's essential at the moment okay the next thing is substance painter as so i got it from my steam so steam right we have something here too what is this this is our desktop file okay if you have not allowed launching or it should allow launching and once you allow launching it will it will show you don't allow launching option if it's allowed to launch what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is right click and hit show in files this will show the desktop file now i can try and edit it categories game oh that's not fair first thing i want to do is i want to rename it to substance simply substance okay that's the first thing i want to do control s and change the comment from play this game to uh, play this game on steam to adobe substance 3d okay painter and save the startup file actually this doesn't affect how our substance painter is viewed over here because whatever is viewed in our apps panel application launcher uh, this is affected from the local file so i'm going to copy this and go to home local share applications here i'm going to delete it or oh, let's see yeah it's the same thing right so we can delete it without a problem and i'm going to paste that thing i made the edits to name is substance and comment adobe substance 3d painter surely this will change its name I want to make it go away first. Okay, it's gone. Now paste it. Load up, load up. Substance. Great. Cool. Now the challenge is how do we set up a shortcut for the substance? The shortcut would be what would be the shortcut super s i suppose yes super s is what i meant to keep the shortcut for substance designer no substance painter and i should figure out how to set up a shortcut for this because this is a steam app and it's directly from steam so it's, it's directly launched from steam or rather i have to get I have to go and dig deep where the steam files are launching from and make some script from over there that would be the best thing to do what i think is it's not that big of a deal we can easily hunt for the files of substance let's see just go to home and there is this file or folder called dot steam that's where we should go 
and there is Debian installation and in there we can find something I suppose hmm where should we look for package is it package no is it Linux 64 no steam games he found something but that's not it okay let's go to steam in case we are not able to find it we can always go to steam and look for it if we go to our app panel we can see manage and browse local files okay so that was it debian installation steam apps common substance okay now i should remember debian installation steam apps common there we go there we can find our apps now let's see can I launch it directly from here yes I can and does it work yes it does it does flawlessly yes it does so you don't have to worry too much about just running it yes so this is our executable file or binary file and we just want to make a script which runs this just as usual okay that's it okay I'm gonna create a script right away from my text editor I'm going to paste it like okay prime space this one but we have to enter the first line right hmm there is something to note here So what I was saying was, I copied the wrong thing. I copied the wrong thing. This is not what we want. We want the path of this Adobe Substance Painter binary. And it is this, I have to copy paste it again. Copy and paste it. Great. And also one thing to note is, I have not pasted my binary's name. I'm going to copy the name of the binary and enter a slash and paste it here now one more thing to do is you have to enter quotes enter it within quotes enter the whole thing enter the whole path of this within quotes that is really important this is because there are spaces in the name of these executables and folders even if they don't have space, it's a good practice to enter it within the quotes. Yeah, precisely double quotes. And also, what's our first line for the script? Let's see. Here we go. Yes. This is something we always, we have used many times. So you should be familiar to this by now. This is just... A github repo of pop os and this is how we use our dedicated graphics card every time we launch something this is the settings or this is the command for that okay now let's save it 
Now where should we save it? Of course inside our scripts and we should name it hmm, let's name it painter no substance dot sh substance dot sh cool let's try running it but by using our shortcuts let's set up our shortcuts first in the settings go to keyboards keyboard okay now go to custom shortcut and add one name i'll call it substance painter why not and you know what i'll just rename it to substance painter because in future i may be thinking what substance which substance okay substance painter hmm. better properties of course we have to make it executable this is something i forgot and i'm glad i came back to rename it okay just copy this parent folder yes in our commands just enter this folder enter and enter a slash and copy paste the exact name of this script yes that should do it and what should we set our shortcuts to super s super s is already used hmm in stacking mode i'm going to replace it i mean i never use that shortcut super s let's see if it works or uh, it should work right super s yes it works perfectly and one more thing to note is that if you do not have a swap space of more than 17 gb substance will show an error it will show a warning so what i mean is you should have a swap space of at least how much ah i don't know what it's showing over here it's absolutely wrong i think memory i only have a swap space of around 17 gb that's for sure let's see in system monitor we could look for that yes this is something to note because if you haven't installed your os gnu pop os yet you should make sure that you install with a swap of more than 17 gb or you could simply make it into 1800 gb or 1800 mb okay, that's what i did i i allocated a space of 1800 mb while installing gnu pop os okay So our substance painter it's working fine and there is one more thing to do and what's it i have to change the keyboard shortcuts inside of substance painter this is really essential <laughs> i have made a video on this and you could simply refer that and change it right now i'm not going to change it because i want to do some experiments before changing some copy paste experiments hey so these are the shortcuts to change i have screenshot it somewhere before resetting 
so I'm glad I made a reset or copy of this before reinstalling my OS. So I'm going to launch my substance using super S key and then I'm going to edit the settings. Keyboard shortcuts, right? Just scroll all the way down. Now you can see something like camera rotate. It's set to middle mouse button. And camera translate, it's set to shift middle mouse. And camera zoom, it's control middle mouse. And it's have a clashing shortcut that is the autofocus. We can set it to something else. Control Alt right. Oh, Control Shift right. Control Alt right. Anything will do as long as it doesn't mess with other softwares, other shortcuts. Okay. That's it. I have set my shortcuts this is just for an experiment i want to save these shortcuts so i think saving the configurations will save hmm. or i want to see if i can import this thing and yeah maybe next time i'll just try it out dot local no dot config Adobe Adobe Substance Painter. I'm going to save it somewhere else. So I'll make a backup of it and next time when I'm installing Substance Painter, I'll just try replacing this config file and check if it changes the shortcut. Hey, here's something worth noting. This is a dot SPP file or Substance Painter file. And if I want to open it with Substance Painter directly, it is not showing up here. And why is that? It's because our Substance Painter file or the Substance Painter desktop file. Here we go. It does not have a MIME type. And what is a MIME type? If you open up our Blender desktop, Blender.desktop, it have something like this. MIME type equal to application slash X Blender. We need to find the MIME types of our applications like Unreal, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, all of that we are going to install. Maybe a Google search could simply provide it or maybe I don't know. Let me try if I can get the MIME type of our Unreal Engine and Substance Painter. Hey, I realized that searching for MIME types, it's beyond my scope. <laughs> if you guys know what MIME type to use or how do you make Substance apps and Unreal to appear in this list, let me know, you know, you could be of help to me. I don't know how to do this, so I think I need, I will look for someone else's help in this matter. But for the rest of the matter, let's continue with setting up Substance Designer. Yes, Substance Designer. Okay, where do we get this Substance Designer file? And you can get this from you know where, I'm, go I'm not going to mention where, but you know how to download it and you know how to set files up, right? What you have to do is if you have an RPM file, just extract it and you need to change this file and make sure that it have this permission allowed. So if you try and run this, let's see what happens. 
nothing happens right why is that why is that in fact it crashes you can see some crash window over here yes it's crashed oh this is a great time to show you what hap what to do when something like this happens if a crash has happened what what you can do is go to your system monitor and you can see this substance designer or whichever program you are trying to run you can kill it just kill it once you kill it it's gone yeah, that should solve the problem not yet that means I have I have to kill all of the instances of that program Adobe substance kill Adobe substance designer kill but mind you if it's some other program that you are using and if you kill it in the middle of working it could cause the loss of data or you could lose data in front or in between okay if you are making changes to that file or if you are working and you you get a crash like this you shouldn't try to kill it you probably should wait and see if it works out by itself but since I know this won't work at all there is a problem with this substance designer actually the problem is that when we are trying to launch it it's launching it from it's launching from the integrated graphics card so we have to change it to launch it using our what dedicated graphics card and it's actually very simple but in this specific case I think we need to do a little bit more work um, I will get to it I'll I'll okay I will tell you what I mean there is a caveat here and I know I noticed that if you are in NVIDIA graphics mode you don't have to go around tinkering with these things if you could just switch to NVIDIA graphics mode you could run this flawlessly that's the thing here on the NVIDIA graphics mode if you are on that you could run it that's it but I'm trying to fix it using the script but let's see if it works right if it works right off the right out of the box great if it doesn't let's solve it so what's our script I'm going to my pocket again to copy paste the code this is what happens when you're not a programmer I'm not a programmer so what <laughs> Not everyone can be a program, right? Okay, here we go. I'm going to copy this code and paste it. Now, prime space. Okay, I'm going to copy the parent folder of this file okay I'm going to enter it within quotes and also copy the name of it and make it a proper path now I'm going to save this into a script file where should I save it probably in the desktop or no maybe I should save it in the apps what I have done is already I have made this designer.desktop file so I can just override it yeah no problem just replace it okay now I have my designer.desktop file let's see what inside what's inside it designer.desktop and yeah that's it. that's it that should work right 
make sure you allow the executable permission now just open with the text editor again and see is it gonna work who knows hey we did some mistake here um, we actually should have changed we have we should have this is our script this is not our desktop file so sorry for the mistake I should have I should have been careful okay I'm going to rename it again wait a second Control shift s designer dot sh for script I'm going to save it here okay now it should be fine let's save this to our script yeah now let's open this in terminal and let's see if it works Okay, permission denied that means we have to go to the permission and allow executable now let's retry okay this is annoying and also before that let's try and set up our dot desktop file okay designer dot desktop file I have messed up my designer dot desktop file by renaming it or entering the script code inside that file so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change everything and paste a template or I already have it saved it somewhere else let me look for it okay here you go I have hey here you go so I have made a desktop file for our designer so it's a basic template of dot desktop file the type equal to application name equal to designer and the executable file it's our designer dot sh file let's change the path of it inside let's change the path to designer.sh I would say the real path hmm it's in the scripts and let's copy the parent folder okay that's the executable file home username app scripts designer.sh that's how i saved my script file that we have just made and also what about the icon it's already set up it's simply this folder and you can look for it you know wherever you have extracted that file and inside the resources folder there is an there is a folder called icons and there is this substance uh, 256x256.png that's there if you don't have any icons there you could look for it and assign an icon over here you know just to make it clear here um, resources icons you can see the icons here right this is the icon I actually copy pasted this and made it into a desktop file so I'm going to save it where I'm gonna save it okay it's in the apps here it is so we should keep our desktop file in the home or local right local share applications now we are here we gotta paste it 
designer.desktop this is our this is where we should see our file pop up yeah we can see the designer right now let's see if it works right out of the box yes it does it works fine there is no flow okay so that's how we make our designer to get working you know I'm kind of surprised it worked right out of the box <laughs> that's a little surprising to me anyways I'm glad it worked hey here's a quick heads up you know the by default the video player it's something else like this it's not VLC player so how do you make it into VLC player you could open with VLC media player but instead what you could do is go to properties and open with VLC media player and set this as default that should do the problem solving <laughs> okay that should solve your problem hey our work is not done yet we have set up a shortcut for substance painter which is super s key now what we have left is substance designer let's set it up with super d go to settings keyboard customize custom shortcuts name designer command what should be the command we should be running that script file right so let's see which script file I have it in the apps scripts and designer.sh okay cool so I should be copying this parent folder first where is it to the settings just paste it now enter a slash period slash now copy paste its name okay this is the format of making the command now set a shortcut what is it super D super D is already used for show workspaces I'm going to replace it okay cool super D is set up now let's see if it's working fine or at least working properly super D yes it's working it's working just fine okay cool so everything is done so that's that we were not able to set up the mime or we were not able to make these apps to the application list so that we could assign something like this to our substance applications or unreal engine the u project files no we were not able to do that but we can always open them from inside our application so that should that should not be a big deal right okay that's it now uh, we can exit out of everything and i'm so glad i was able to show you guys this you know you can work inside linux pretty easily and what i like about this is there is no extra things or there is no bloatware and there is no forced upgrades or updates everything is up to you that's it i really like the environment linux provides you know it's a really good vibe that's why i use linux and also that's all i need really i just need my applications to work fast and i just want them working 
And there may be some limitations, like hardware limitations, because substance designer and substance painter are not actively supported by Adobe for the Linux versions. You know this Substance Designer we installed, it's a pretty old version, it's from 2021. And the Substance Painter, it's also an old version and it does not receive any more updates. So that's some limitation with the Substance apps. And also the Unreal in Linux, I have not used it much and from what I've heard, um, there are some tiny limitations if you're into the coding side of Unreal, but I'm sure you can figure out a way around it. As of Blender, there are limitations like some add-ons which are exclusive for Windows, it doesn't work. For instance, the Quad Remesh add-on, it doesn't work inside Linux. So these are the limitations, but if I were to say these things are not supposed to hold you back from using Linux. These things never come up 99% of the time unless you are exclusively working using these things I mentioned. These limitations are extremely important and you don't want to miss out on them and you keep using them all the time. If that's the case, perfect. You can keep using Windows or I don't know. You could go for anything. You could go for Mac. You know, it's all about in the end what works for you. This is what works for me and this is what I find really useful. So if you guys found it useful and if you guys are going to switch to Linux, I'm glad. I'm glad I could be of help and thanks for watching. See you in the next video.